State of Exception. This is a one school for all lecture by me, Andrew Thomas, at Usfor University College, which I would like you to watch by the 12th of September 2024 when we next meet. We talked in the last philosophical dialogue about power and when is our power justifiable? When is it justifiable to use powerful means, which we have learnt about from really good scientific studies? in order to get pupils to do things that they might not actually want us to do, to get them to learn when they really want to just eat chocolate and watch YouTube. And we argued that, or we talked about the idea that it is perhaps justifiable if the cause is just, if we are asking them to learn something good which will benefit them rather than just making our own lives easier. And that idea that the cause justifies the means has an extreme version in the expression desperate times require desperate measures. And that's what's behind the state of exception or state of emergency you might have heard. And this instinct and this expression has a very concrete his history in Western politics. One of the many reasons that I and many more of us are constantly thinking about the Roman Empire is the story of Cincinnatus. Now, Romans hated kings, but they loved dictators, at least for a while. And why was this? They hated kings, famously the King Tarquin had manipulated his um, position and um, gained lots of power and lots of wealth. And there was a great deal of difference between him and the rest of the people. Shortly after they threw Tarquin out, there was a situation where Rome was at war with a neighbor and they were losing that war. And they went to a farmer who was out plowing his field called Cincinnatus. And they said, can you be our dictator? We are going to declare a state of emergency. And can you be the one that rules that state of emergency? Because states of emergency always went together with some kind of dictatorial power. And the word dictator was a temporary thing. And they allowed Cincinnatus to be a dictator for six months. So he went to the city of Rome and said, everybody has to down tools, stop whatever it is you're doing, grab a great big piece of wood and go with me to save the Republic. And they marched out and the army, which were in a little corner, really, they were surrounded by the enemy army. Um, the people of Rome with their sticks then surrounded that army itself so that they were then themselves stuck between the Roman army in the middle, which was losing the battle, um, and then the Roman citizens on the outside with these sticks so that they couldn't use this charge to get out. And the army, the foreign army submitted and Rome won a great victory. And crucially, Cincinnatus then, after just 15 days of being a dictator, went back to plowing his field and said, I don't want to be a dictator anymore. And if you want to know the whole story, it's actually quite a short story recorded in Livy's History of Rome. Uh, you can Google it. It's quite easy to get hold of. And I think I've got a reference in the um, references at the end of this presentation. Notice that there is this pattern and this pattern has been repeated time and time again. That a crisis forms first and everyone has to agree about the crisis. But as long as everybody does agree about the crisis, then a state of exception can be called. And then a dictator is named, or at least some kind of person to get some special powers. They get the kind of special powers that we wouldn't ordinarily accept. And famously, um, Julius Caesar enjoyed dictatorial powers for the rest of his life. And that is what made him basically a king. So we would not ordinarily accept people to be a dictator but in a state of emergency, some people have to do things they're not usually allowed to do. And some rights that we would usually insist on. So, for example, the freedom of movement, we will deny ourselves for the sake of solving the problem, solving the emergency. And then the third aspect of this is that it has to be limited. We have to set a date for when these dictatorial powers are withdrawn. 
for when we we can consider the emergency over. And there are different ways of doing this. You can set the date or you can set a geographic limit. There are lots of different limitations, but the powers have to be limited. Otherwise, it's not a state of exception. It's not a state of emergency. It's some kind of dictatorship. And there is always this danger of dictatorship in the state of emergency. So notice that this is a democratic phenomenon. There are worries, there are rules, but it is also when democracy breaks out of democracy, you do things that democracies tend not to do. You accept a dictator, you deny human rights or certain particular civic rights. So it's kind of a, a non-democratic order, but within a democracy. Outside democracies, dictators can do this anyway. And this is why Cincinnatus is so famous, because he was a dictator for a very short period of time and he didn't make use of it. He, whereas, CS, whereas Julius Caesar did um, misuse his dictatorial powers. And that is the direct reason for um, his assassination. Let's talk about the Roman Empire. But let's also talk about more contemporary situations. And in the, in the class, we will be applying this framework of interpretation to other situations. One famous example, which you will hear more about in the literature and you will see if you Google, is the Guantanamo Bay base, which was set up in the wake of the brutal 9-11 attacks on the USA, which we will be marking the anniversary of this week. And the detention center was set up to put terrorists in um, a place where they could control them. There was a situation of war, but at the same time, it wasn't war against a foreign state. It was a war against terror, but terrorists aren't war agents. Terrorists are individuals. So it was not, didn't fall into normal legal standards. And it was run by the American government, but it was not on American soil. So it had the status of some kind of legal anomaly. It was a crisis and desperate times required desperate measures. People were denied trial and there were mass protests all over the world. And in 2009, Barack Obama signed an executive order to close the base. Last summer, the UN Special Reporter on, fundamental, on, on Promotion and Protection of Human Rights and Fundamental Freedoms, um, Fionn Nulan Ni Aulain, you will find again, again a reference here. She visited the base and, um, and the detainees um, and called again for it to be practically closed. Amnesty International records that whilst the extraordinary renditions are no longer taking place, the base is still operating. And a lot of people have been actually discharged formally, legally, but they're still there in the base. There is a problem and there is an enduring problem with these kind of exceptional places. They can do all these things, retain people in situations when they're formally legally released, um, because everything about Guantanamo Bay is exceptional. It is America outside America. It is released prisoners still being detained. They are enemies, but they're not criminals. All of this is a, the prime example of a state of exception gone wrong. 